we say it like this. Faith is not magic. So you don't pack an overnight bag waiting on the manifestation. You have to be willing to wait forever. If you're willing to wait, if you're willing to wait forever, you won't have to wait that long. Okay. But you're just showing God that you trust him. If it don't come today, I thank you, Father, I believe I have it. Don't come next week, I believe I have it. I believe I have it. So you keep saying it and saying it, it triggers your belief system on the inside. That's why he says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing. It's manifested by repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. Because you got to get that doubt and that fear from coming in. You keep saying it, it pushes that doubt and fear back down. But if you don't say nothing, doubt and fear will rise up. And before you know it, you'll back off of your confession. Greetings and welcome to another broadcast of Grow to Go Christian Center. My name is Assistant Pastor Herman Alexander Sr. And today we're going to get into the Word of God to take you to another level. Amen. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pray. And then we're going to have a song from our praise team member. And then we're going to get back and teach the Word. So let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for your Word. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad. We thank you for another opportunity to minister to these, your sheep, Father. I pray that revelation knowledge flows freely, unhindered, undistracted, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. But it's in Jesus' name I pray. Satan, I break your powers over this, over this message, over the people. You cannot hinder them from receiving the words and the blessing of God. You cannot hinder them from being doers of the word and not hearers only. In Jesus' name. Satan, I break your powers over the people. I bind every spirit of distraction, confusion, division, rebellion, rejection, false doctrine, false revelation, every evil and wicked hindering spirit that would attempt to disrupt this service or steal from the people in the name of Jesus. I release you from your assignments over us. Loose you now out of darkness, never to return again in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I decrease for your increase. All of you, none of me. I step back so you may step forward. Manifest yourself as the teacher through myself, the year of the vessel, bringing forth revelation, knowledge, spiritual understanding for our spiritual growth and maturity, taking us all to the next level in life and ministry in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, all the adoration for what would be accomplished, what would be revealed through the teaching of your word. In Jesus' name, and the church said, amen. amen and amen. Okay, praise the Lord. Now, we're going to have a song from one of our praise team members, and we'll be back to teach the word. Amen. It's
Praise the Lord. Jesus did it just for me and you too. Amen. He did it for us all. That was the plan of God. Carrying out the plan of God really, really makes God happy. Okay. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay. Today's message is a closer look at living by faith. A closer look at living by faith. Part one. A closer look at living by faith. Purpose of the message is to reveal to all believers that living by faith is not just a word, but a lifestyle. A lot of times we hear people talking about walking by faith, I do this by faith. But are you really living by faith? Do you know what it means to live by faith? It's basically total dependence on God. Total dependence on God. And when you have total dependence on God, it's going to be a little shaky sometimes because when you totally depends on God, see, God is going to allow you to be in a situation where you can't call nobody for help. You can't get on the computer and do it. You'd be like, I don't know what to do. That's when you go to God. But see, God wants you to go to him first. Don't waste that time sweating. He wants you to have sweatless victories. Amen. Go to God first. And then he sees you trust him. You believe in him. You know, but we all got to grow there because, you know, when we first come into the kingdom, we're still doing things our way. But as we begin to mature, we got to do it God's way. Go to him first. Okay. Matthew 6, 33 says what? But put ye, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those things will be added unto you. What things? The things that you want, need, and desire. See, the God, Jesus says, the Father knoweth what you have need of before you ask to think. So he already know you have the need. He wants you to look at him as, you call him Jehovah Driver, he's your provider. Act like it. Amen. Act like it. That's what we're going to have to do. We have to grow to that level where it's total dependence on God. So he's going to allow you to go through situations where he got to come through. See, impossible is where he starts. Miracles is what he does. Amen. Our golden objective is that the believer will increase their level of dependence on God and their belief and their trust and their confidence in God and his word coming to pass. Say that again. Our golden objective is the believer will increase their level of dependence on God and their belief, trust, and confidence in God and his word coming to pass. Okay. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11 first. Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Drop down to verse 6. It says, but without what? Faith. What happens? It is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is or that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that do what? Diligently seek him. So you're putting maximum sustained effort in seeking God because you know he has the answer. His word is the final answer. So if you're seeking God, he likes that. He's saying, my children is dependent on me and I'm going to come through because he says, I hasten my word to perform it. He hastens his word. He's looking forward to showing you that I got your answer in every situation. There's nothing that you can't have the victory in as long as you depend on him. Amen. So faith, Hebrews eleven six, that's telling us that faith is a lifestyle, not just a word. Okay. Now, so what is faith? Faith is belief, trust, and confidence and what God says in his word will come to pass, that you do it without doubt and without fear, but with what? Begin with an E. Bingo. Expectation. Expectation. If you know God got the answer and you believe and trust and have confidence in him, then all you have to do is expect it. Now, sometimes we get fear and doubt because it take a while. But see how it works. When you pray and ask God for something, 
He says, okay, you got it. And it's almost like back in the day when you used to put stuff in the layaway, put your name on it. You ask God for something, he put it in the layaway. He says, yes, you got it. But he want to see if you believe. So sometimes he make you wait to see if you're going to cave in and quit, if you're going to fear, or if you're going to doubt. That's how he grows you, by allowing you to go through these things. Okay. The Bible says through faith and what? Patience, you inherit the promise. So you got it. But how patient are you? You got to grow. And he's going to grow you at the beginning because there are things down the line that may take a while for things to manifest. Because God has to put this over here and put this over here and set this up. And then sometimes he got to use people. Because God does things through people. The devil does things through people. And sometimes the devil's people is in the way. And he's got to shift things around. And that takes time. Because he's got to get to somebody who hears him. But not just hear him, somebody who hears and obey. Because a lot of people hear God and they step back and don't do it. So he got to find somebody else. He's looking for another doer. So if God is looking for help, the Bible said we or co-laborers. God does his part. We do our part. So therefore, if you're not doing your part, he got to find somebody else. Amen. And if they don't do it, then he got to find somebody else like that. So you want to be closer to God because he rewards them that would diligently seek him. Okay. You're doing it on purpose. Your will is involved. You want this. You want to do this. You want to grow, okay? Especially if you got a family because your family is watching you. They see you go to church. They see you praying. And they see things come to pass. And see, that would encourage them to do the same thing, okay? Remember, you're always on display. You're always on display. So now, let's go to our foundation scripture. Foundation scripture, Romans chapter 1 and Habakkuk 2. Romans chapter 1 and Habakkuk 2. Romans chapter 1 and Habakkuk 2. Okay, Romans 1, drop down to verse 16. It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? For it is the power of God to salvation to who? Everyone that believes. That's the key. Everyone that believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from what? Faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So it's a lifestyle. Now, I, I, I like to use acronyms. So if you look at the word live, how you spell live? L-I-V-E. So then, well, let me say it like this. Okay, we do it like this. The just shall, L-I-V-E, live in victory every day. How? By faith. So in other words, if your victory is in faith, then you have to master faith. You have to master faith. You got to grow in faith to the point where there's no more doubt, no more fear. All you got to know, if I pray, God answers my prayer. That's it. And you stand on it no matter how long it takes. Because when you pray, God answers your prayer. You're just waiting on the manifestation of your prayer. Sometimes it take a day. Sometimes it take a week. Sometimes it take a month. Sometimes it take months. Sometimes it take years. Okay? But next, next Sunday, we're going to look at levels of faith. Because before you go to the next level, you got to figure out the level that you're at now. Amen? Because it's steps of faith. Steps of faith. Okay, turn to Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2, verse 4. It says, Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live. How? By his faith. So you can use somebody else's faith. That's why we have testimonies. You're looking at somebody else's faith. They use their faith and God came through. But the just shall live by his faith. So you got to get it to the point where you know the word work when you work the word. You got to know. Then you have a testimony. 
then your testimony will encourage others. Okay? Because everybody going to go through something because we are down here and Satan's down here too. And he don't want you to get this word because he know you're going to tell other people. That you will affect your family, those connected to you and those that are around you. He don't want you to get this word. Okay? Okay, our first point. You must apply the biblical factors of faith, which are always fivefold. You must apply the biblical factors of faith, which are always fivefold. The first one, hearing. Hearing. Hearing is exposure to truth. Turn to Romans, Romans chapter 10, Romans 10. Romans 10, drop down to verse 14. It says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. So that means the preacher got to have some new shoes on, you know, when you step in the foot. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Verse 16. But they have not all believed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Verse 17, all together. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it's repetitive, repetitive hearing. You got to hear the word of God over and over and over again. Why? Because you've got this worldliness in you that's got to get out. And the only way to get it out is to get the new information in. Because the world's information is of the devil, the world system. Before you came into the word of God, we were just doing what everybody else was doing because it seemed like it was right. And you hadn't heard the word of God. yet. It appeared, and sometimes we heard, heard error in church. Because that person that was up there preaching to you was wrong. They were entertaining you and not teaching you. Don't get me wrong, preaching is for inspiration. Teaching is for information. You want to be informed that the word of God is true and that it comes from the spirit of God. See, every church in existence is not of God just because it's a church. God didn't call every man that's in that pulpit. Some of them just doing it because they like the limelight of preaching. And for the money, got to say that. But see, they are wrong. The Bible even tells you, you better make sure you're called. Because you get up there and be talking to people, you mislead them and mislead yourself. And their blood is on you, the Bible says. You better get it right, amen. That's why it says many are called, few are chosen. But some people put themselves up there. I'm going to get me a building. I mean, and then if somebody gets a building, somebody else, I'm going to get me one too. And they have 35 members for 20 years. Something wrong with that. Because the Bible says the church increases daily. God is a God of increase. Amen. We said Romans 10, 14. Okay, so the first biblical factor is hearing, exposure to the truth. Second one is believing, believing. Okay, we say it's five of them. First one's hearing, second one's believing. Turn to 2 Corinthians 4 and Mark 9. 2 Corinthians 4 and Mark chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and Mark chapter 9. Okay, 2 Corinthians 4, let's drop down to verse 4, 13. It says, we have the self-same 
We, I mean, we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Now look at, look at Mark chapter 9. Drop down to verse 23. Jesus said to him, if you can believe what happens, all things are possible to him that believes. So you believe the word of God, you should have no problem in speaking it. Like when you're praying over your food and people around at work, wherever, you shouldn't have a problem with it. How many times have you seen people sit down at lunch at work and they just sit down and just start gobbling? Ain't prayed over nothing. You, you the example. You start doing that, they'll wait for you to pray before they eat. I, I didn't experience that. And I told you when we had our Christmas thing, all the people that go to church, they said, let Herman pray over food. So I'm saying. Not bragging, but that was just a sign. Okay, third biblical factor, receiving, receiving. Receiving is accepting the word of God as true. Receiving, accepting the word of God as true. Let's turn to John 17. John 17. John chapter 17. Drop down to verse 17. It says, sanctify them through your truth. What's the next four words say? Your word is truth. The word is truth. In Numbers, Numbers 23, 19. Y'all know that by heart, don't you? It says, God is not a man that he should lie. Okay. He's not a man that he should lie. But we, we, we can look at it. Maybe some new people around. Numbers 23. Numbers 23. 23. Numbers 23.19. says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? And shall he not do it? Or has he spoken? And shall he not make it good? Amen. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Amen. Let's look at 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3. We're on the receiving. 2 Timothy 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. Let's go to verse 16 and 17. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 said, All scripture is given by inspiration of who? God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished into all good works. So it's go, you're, going, you're going to get mature. You're gonna, it's going to mature you up. Okay. So, so we had first biblical factor was hearing. Second was believing. Third one was receiving. The fourth one is doing slash obeying. Doing slash obeying. Turn to Deuteronomy 6. And Deuteronomy 12. Deuteronomy 6 and Deuteronomy 12. I'm sorry, is that it? No, Deuteronomy 6. Go to 6. Go to 6. Deuteronomy 6. In verse 1. It says, Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that you might do what? Do them, underline that, do them in the land where you go to possess it. God gave you dominion over what? All the earth. Amen. Pick a spot. 
that you might fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you and your son and your son's sons. So you're responsible for three generations, yours, your children, and your grandchildren. So you need to be on your knees. So get you some knee pads. Amen. And your son and your son's sons all the days of your life. So you don't stop. And that your days may be what? Prolonged. Okay. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with you, and that you may increase mightily as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you in the land that flows with milk and honey. I like that. Amen. Increase. Everything being good. Why? Because you are a doer of the word. Amen. Uh, let me see. 12. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Deuteronomy 12. 12 1. Deuteronomy 12 1. It says, These are the statutes and judgments which you shall observe to do in the land which the Lord God of your fathers gives you to possess it all the days that you live upon the earth. Okay? So he's looking for obedient children. Okay? And your reward is long life. And you're in the land that flows with milk and honey. And you're prospering. Amen. So why don't you do it? Somebody say, mm hmm. James 122. James 122. James 122. Just say, I'm, I'm growing. I'm growing. I'm growing. I'm growing. I'm growing. We got to grow. Amen. Got to grow. James 122 says, but you... But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. So if you don't do what the word say, God is saying, you can't even blame that on the devil. Because life is choice driven. You chose not to do it. Just like Thomas, when Jesus, when they told Thomas, the disciple, that we seen Jesus. He said, I will not believe unless I touch the hole in his hand and the hole in his eye. I will not believe. So your will is involved. So will you do what the word says or not? You say you're living by faith. That means you're going to stand on it regardless. Amen. Okay. The fifth one is acting or slash speaking, which sometimes involves confessing the word. Turn to Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. Talking about living by faith. Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs 18, 21. 18, 20 says, death and life are where? In the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So you're going to have the benefit of what comes out of your mouth. So you better be saying the right thing. Amen. The right thing. So when you're speaking, I was just talking to, uh, uh, Ch Ch is Charles still outside? Yeah, okay, you, you don't have to get them. I was talking to Charles a minute ago, and uh, I was asking him about, uh, now he was saying he glad he outside, you know, monitoring the bathroom and stuff like that. I said, yes, yeah, a nice day. He said, yeah, because being inside, he said, it affects my allergies. I said, oh, yeah, really? I said, well, when you say that, you're bringing ownership to the allergies. Do you want the allergies? He said, no. He said, you're right. I'm sorry. See, you have to catch people, catch them, you know, teach them, you know, because you can even believe it. Sometimes you talk too fast, you say the wrong thing, you get the wrong result. My allergies. You can't say it like that. You say, I was diagnosed with allergies, but I believe I'm healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Always follow up with the word of God because the word of God is the final answer. The word of God is the final answer. If the word of God is the final answer, then it should be the last thing that's said. It's done. It's like when you're caught, judge hit the gap. I believe I'm healed in Jesus' name. That's it. Now, what do we say? Mark 11. Mark 11. Mark chapter 11. Your Bible should fall open on Mark 11. Mark 11. Mark 11. 
22, 22 to 25. Mark 11, 22 to 25. Talking about doing, who we say, speaking, acting and speaking. It says for, I mean, wait a minute. And Jesus answering said to them, have faith in God. For verily I say to you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, and the mountain represents your circumstance, situation, or challenge, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not what? Doubt in his heart. Because if you doubt, you're going to do without. But shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Like Charles was saying, my allergies, you're going to keep them. Because you, you, you bring an ownership to them. You're saying they're yours. I ask him, do you want those? Don't say it then. Amen. 24. Therefore, I say to you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. It doesn't take God all day to answer your prayer. The time takes is the manifestation of the thing that you pray. Amen. It's not an all day thing. Now, uh, let me say it like this faith is not magic so you don't pack an overnight bag waiting on the manifestation you have to be willing to wait forever if you're willing to wait if you're willing to wait forever you won't have to wait that long okay but you're just showing God that you trust him if it don't come today I thank you Father I believe I have it don't come next week I believe I have it I believe I have it. So you keep saying it and saying it, it triggers your belief system on the inside. That's why he says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing. It's manifested by repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. Because you got to get that doubt and that fear from coming in. You keep saying it, it pushes that doubt and fear back down. But if you don't say nothing, doubt and fear will rise up and before you know it, you'll back off of your confession. See where we at, 24. Therefore I say to you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And 25 is what gets people sometimes. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against any that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. So you got to make sure you're clean. So before you pray, Confess your sins and forgive somebody. If, if, if somebody ticked you off and you hadn't forgiven them yet, you better say something. Amen. See, God created a world that you can develop and shape by words, but it's his words. Amen. And your belief in his words is what makes the difference. Believing in his words and then faith in the words come by repetitive, repetitive, repetitive hearing. Okay. I've said it before, i say it again. The feeding of your spirit has to outweigh the feeding of your flesh. Whoever eats the most will dominate the system of man because it's about words. Words are spiritual containers. Words can affect you positively or words can affect you negatively. That's why you got to say the right words at the right time, amen? All right, so those five biblical factors we're hearing Believing, receiving, doing slash obeying, acting slash speaking. Okay. Now, second point. You must have your old, old mindset transformed into a kingdom mindset. You must have your old mindset transformed into a kingdom mindset. Romans 12. And 2 Corinthians 5, Romans 12 and 2 Corinthians 5. Romans 12, your Bible should fall open right there too. Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to what? This world, the world system. The world system is designed by the devil. He's the God of the world, of this world. He's not the God of creation, he's the God of this world. He got like that through Adam's sin. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. 
2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. Let's drop down to 12. 2 Corinthians 5, 12. For we command not ourselves again to you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf that you may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be ourselves, I mean, whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constrains us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all what? Dead, and that he died for all, that we should live not hereafter to themselves, but to him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, hereafter know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now hereafter know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? New creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The first part of 18, and all things are of God. So if you're a new creature, old things have passed away. You don't think like you used to think. You don't talk like you used to talk. You don't walk like you used to walk. You don't respond like you used to respond. Because you got to renew your mind to respond with the word of God. And if you don't do that, then you stop God from moving. God don't respond to your situation. He responds to your faith about that situation. So you got to find your situation in the word. It's in here. Every concern known to man is in the word. So you got to do some digging or call somebody up, another brother, sister in Christ, and ask them. They may know. Okay. Uh, la, 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 la. Second Corinthians 3. Second Corinthians 3. Second Corinthians chapter 3. I'm sorry. Second Timothy 3. I'm sorry. Second Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3. Verse 16. It says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished to all good works. So let's break that down. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. What is doctrine? Doctrine is the order of God. It's good teaching. It's the order of God. It's how God works according to his word and not what man or the world says. It's not what man or the world says. So it's the order of God, how God works according to his word and not what man or the world says. The next one is, it said, it's for reproof. Reproof is for the dismantling of error. Because sometimes we found, like I said earlier, we found error in church. We was in a church where they were preaching and entertaining and wouldn't teach us anything. And you have to be careful when you listen to inspirational speakers. Because a lot of times they inspire you, but they don't go to the word. And if you got somebody in there new that don't know the word and they say the wrong scripture, you, you, you misled them. So you have to know the word yourself. Thank God we had a man of God teach us the word. Pastor Hart, amen. Amen. So reproof is for the dismantling of error. And a lot of times we was in those churches we thought that they knew what they were talking about because they was there before us. And people kept coming until we read it for ourselves. Oh, man, what they said was wrong. Amen. So that's why he said, study to show yourself approved unto God. See, when you study, you qualify for God to give you revelation. I say, if you study. Amen. Okay. The next one is for Correction, correction, the exposure to truth. God's word is the final answer. See, faith is based on the word of God. So he exposed you to truth 
So you can see the error. That's why Jesus says, I'm the same yesterday, today, forever. I change not. So therefore, you can take the same word 10 years later and show somebody what God said his word still stands. It still works. That's why we have testimonies. Somebody got it and they given a testimony how they stood on their word and God moved. Somebody else, they stood on the word and God moved. Somebody else, they stood on the word and God moved. Yeah. All right. Next one is, is a correction for instruction in righteousness. Instruction is basically the systematic application of that truth. Because see, it's really a, it's a, it's a system. In, in, in Mark, where he tells you, uh, Whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, believe you receive it and you shall have it. That's really like a system. You use that system, you get things done. It's not like a generic prayer for everything, but it's a principle. It's a biblical principle. You use that to get things done. It's other scriptures you use to get things done. But that's a system. You go to the word of God. You go to the Father. You pray in the name of Jesus. And you end your prayer in Jesus' name. He's the author and finisher of your faith. So it's a system. We have a system of operating. And it says, verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished to all good works. Basically, it means you, get, you reach perfection. You reach a level of maturity and spiritual growth. Because that's what we always want to do. We want to grow to the next level. You should be higher this year than you was last year. Amen. And continuous, okay? All right. A third point. You must desire to please your heavenly father. So because of that, your will is involved. Isaiah 119 says, if you be willing and obedient, if you be willing and obedient, you eat what? The good of the land. So your will is involved. You got to do it. You got to choose. I'm going to do this. You've been trying it your way for years and you see the results. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain by trying God's way. Amen. You heard about God doing this and God doing that. But when you're going to step out and try. And then Hebrews eleven six, we read that. But without faith is what? Impossible to please him. So if you don't use faith, you're telling God you don't trust him. You're telling God, I'm going to take care of God. I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to do it myself. And God will just step back and let you do it. Okay. He loved you that much. He let you bump your head. And then you come back to him. And he's like, could have saved time if you had just asked me first. Amen. But let's, let's do it like this. Every lesson not learned is soon to be repeated. Every lesson not learned is soon to be repeated. So let's stop repeating. Let's start Walking in sweatless victories by going to God first instead of stepping out because we waste time and sometimes we make it worse by trying to do it ourselves. Amen. And Romans 117, we read that one already. The just shall live by faith. But it's once again, it's a decision. Life is choice driven. You have to choose to do it. If you choose to do it your way, God will just step back and let you do it your way. Until you come to the revelation that I got to go to God. Because see the whole thing is about having a relationship with God. Once you got that relationship closer to God. It's easier to obey him. And you get closer it's easier to hear him. And recognize that's why you have to have that block of time where you spend with him. So you recognize him leading and guiding you. Because sometimes he tell you no. And don't get me wrong, I know the Bible says the answer to God is yes and amen, but he says, no, it's not time to do this certain thing that he wants you to do. That's all it is, because God's timing is the key. You might, God might have told you to do something, but not today. See what I'm saying? Not today. You have to get direction from Holy Spirit. He'll tell you when to move. Remember our pastor told a testimony where he told Dr. Price, I'm going to have a ministry in St. Louis. And Dr. Price said, you're not ready yet. And he waited, what, five years? But see, God told him ahead of time, why? To prepare him. Prepare him to go. Okay? God gets your attention because he still got to shape you and mold you. 
in the direction where he wants you. Because if you go too soon, you mess it up. Amen. No appointment, no anointment. Amen. So, that being said, the will of God does not automatically come to pass, okay? If the will of God came to pass, then we wouldn't, we don't need to pray. If it automatically came to pass. Ezekiel 22, 30, he says, I'll start for a man, but I couldn't find none. So if he could do what he wanted to do, not saying that God is not all power and all might, knows everything, but if his will would automatically come to pass, he make us, he make us get saved, make us pay tithes and offerings, make us do this. But he's not doing that. He said, whosoever will, let them come. So your will is involved. He wants you to love him because you want to do it. Not because so and so doing it, because he's gonna make you do it like that. That wouldn't be good. Because you'd be forced, just like he tells you about giving. He says, not grudgingly or of necessity. God likes to what kind of giver? Cheerful. Hilarious, happy, excited, giver. Amen. He wants you to be look forward to doing it. Be glad you're doing it. God bless you with it. Because he, he wants God's in the blessing business. He wants to bless you. Because see what he does, when he does that, he's advertising himself by blessing you. Because when you say, How you get that? Well, God did this. God did this. God opened this door. So he's advertising himself through you. Amen. And then that's why when God do something, you're supposed to tell it. Amen. Now, God waits for you to invite him into your situation. He not, he'll sit back there and watch you cry. If you don't say nothing. He don't want you to cry. But he says, what's the only thing you desire? Asking you, shall we see you have not because you, it's not. Everyone that asked is receiving. Amen. Okay. Now, why does God do that? Because God is a God of order and he will not violate the order that he instituted in the earth realm. Okay. He wouldn't be God. He gave man dominion over the earth. Adam lost it. And when Adam lost it, the devil became in charge. So God had to come up with a plan to get dominion back through Jesus. So those that accept Jesus, you now got your dominion back. But those that don't accept Jesus, the devil still got rulership over them. Amen. That's why our job is to go get them. Jesus says, I came to seek and save the lost. He said, the work that I do you shall do also. Okay. So we got work to do until Jesus come back and get us. So when he, when he, when he hold up your, see how many people you got saved. You got the front and the back filled up. Amen. That's what we want. Amen. Fourth point. Three reasons why you must turn from walking by sight until living by faith. Three reasons why you must turn from walking by sight into living by faith, okay? When we said the just shall live by faith, it's a lifestyle, right? So, first reason why you have to do it, you must become an example to be an example. You must become an example to be an example. Turn to 1 Timothy 4, 1 Peter 5. 1 Timothy 4, 1 Peter 5. God can't do it by himself. He need you to show people that God is true. You, go, you still going to that church over there? Yep. Amen. 1 Timothy 4, start at verse 12. Let no man despise your youth, but be you what? An example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not, let me see, neglect not the gift that is in you, which was given you by prophecy with the lay hand, 
laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear to who? To all. Take heed to yourself and to the, to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you shall both save yourself and who? Them that hear you. See what I'm saying? You got to be an example to be an example. First Peter 5. First Peter 5. First Peter chapter 5. Verse 1. It says, the elders which are among you, I exhort who am also, I mean, the elders which are among you, I exhort who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but how? Willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being what? Examples to the flock. The minister should be examples to the flock. Or how God moved in their life, he'll move in your life too. Amen. All right, one more. Let me see. Okay. Your living by faith must positively affect those connected to you and those around you. That's the second reason why you must turn from walking by sight into living by faith. Your living by faith must positively affect those connected to you and those around you. God wants to advertise your faith walk to draw others to his kingdom. Okay? God wants to advertise your faith walk to draw others to his kingdom. In the third one, your living by faith must positively affect the lost. Your living by faith must positively affect the lost. Turn to Luke 19 and John 14 right quick. Luke 19, John 14. Luke 19 and John 14. Luke 19.10, it says, for the son of man is come to do what? Seek and to save that which was lost. To seek and to save that which was lost. John 14, John 14, verse 12, John 14, 12. It says, verily, verily, I say to you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, what happens? Shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Amen. Now, one note, and then we're going to close. In order to change from walking by sight to living by faith, your mind must be renewed because the new information affects your belief system. And when your belief system is affected, Transformation starts, and when transformation is completed, change is manifested. Say that one more time. In order to change from walking by sight to living by faith, your mind must be renewed because the new information affects your belief system. When your belief system is affected, transformation starts, and when transformation is completed, change is manifested. And that's what God wants to do, change you to the image of his son. Amen. I'm out of time. I thank you for yours. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, thank you, viewers, for viewing in this broadcast. We want to make sure you have an opportunity to grow to the next level of living by faith. And it starts with giving your life to Jesus. So if you never confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it, it's easily done through a simple prayer. So repeat this prayer after me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus 
was raised from the dead, I would be saved. I believe in my heart and I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God and he died for my sins and he was raised from the dead for my justification and I receive him right now as my Lord and Savior. You also said in your word that if I would ask for Holy Spirit, you would give him to me. So I'm asking you now to fill me with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come inside me, lead me, guide me, anoint me, empower me, and direct my life so I may live for God. Reveal to me God's plan and purpose for my life here on earth. Thank you, Father, for saving me and for filling me with Holy Spirit and for revealing to me by faith your plan for my life here on earth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we want to congratulate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, you are now born again, filled with the Spirit, and God has a, has a, a special prayer language for you. He'll give you at the proper time, and he will reveal to you your created purpose, because he didn't just create you to just go on earth and just do what you want to do. He has an assignment for you. And if you're not sure what it is, just pray and ask him, and he has to tell you, okay? Because he's going to judge you for not doing it. So if he's going to judge you, he has to reveal it to you. Amen. But thanks again for praying, and uh, thanks for, you for tuning in. And I want to pray a little benediction for you, prayer before you go. And also, if uh, this message has been a blessing to you and you've been there to sow a seed, Call the number at the bottom of the screen and sow your seed and we'll stand in agreement that you have the hundredfold return on your giving. And I want to pray a benediction prayer for you guys. Sometimes you're going through some health challenges or uh, uh, you need help here and there and you just don't know where to turn. So we're going to stand in the gap for you. So Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your word. We thank you for those who are tuning in. I pray, Father, that you heal their body. If they're going through any health challenges, anything wrong, we curse the spirit of infirmity over them right now in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare healing in your body from the top of your head to the soles of your feet in Jesus' name. Those that need deliverance, Father, we pray that you deliver them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. And you said in your word, you would deliver them out of all their troubles. So, Father, we stand in the gap for them. And we pray, ask, and thank you, Father, for deliverance, Father, of whatever situation they're in, that you deliver them and show them the victory. Show them that you are the God, the deliverer in Jesus' name. And those having financial challenges, we pray, Father, that you open doors of opportunity, Father. Bring those financials, financial uh, uh, blessings in, Father, so that they are recovered, Father, from those financial challenges in Jesus' name. So we just thank you and praise you for your word. We give you, Father, all the praise, honor, and glory for delivering your people in Jesus' name. We thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next broadcast in part two. In Jesus' name, be blessed, put God first, and he'll change your life like never before. In Jesus' name, we see you. Bye-bye.